And they, they felt utterly lost and alone. They, they felt they couldn't share these experiences with their girlfriends or their, their mothers or whatever. They were just, how, how could they possibly relate to someone who'd been living at home? They could These extraordinary scenes you're couldn't. talking about. One bloke, one bloke, a fellow called Ray Park, and the ship's quartermaster, got back and he, he was welcomed home in the village uh, to his, you know, his little suburb in Footscray, it was in Melbourne, actually. And um, the local butcher said, you've got no idea what it was like here. Back at home when you blokes away, you couldn't get a pound of tea to save yourself. <laughs> no, that's right. Blood, Blood Bancroft, the bloke I told you about on the submarine, they put him back in uniform and he went back down to the Flinders Naval Depot in Melbourne and they said, got just the job for you. They said, we're building this railway around the edge of the bay, so just, we, fi- we figure you've got some experience. Well, he, he, told them, he told them exactly where they could jam their railway. <laughs> he built enough for the Japanese, he had no ambition to build any more railways. So a lot of them had real trouble trying to rebuild their lives. A few committed suicide. A lot of them uh, hit, hit uh, the drink, hit the booze. And for a long time, they would associate often only with themselves. Some of them, you know, there was one bloke, and his, his daughter would tell me about this. He could only eat squatting on his, you know, as if squatting on the floor of a, of a, of a, of a prison camp and could only eat rice for a while. He, he found it impossible to come to grips with Australian food. They felt that life had passed them by. They'd missed all sorts of things like the invention of the biro pen, that sort of thing, that life had moved on without them. Many of them adjusted very, very well. They came to terms with it, although to this day some of them still have the most hideous nightmares and a small thing can trigger them to remember the loss of a mate who they might have held, you know, who's, who they might, whose body, dying body, they literally might have cradled in, in a camp somewhere. They have the most terrible memories. But they I, are, can, I can hear the affection in your voice for them, Mike. I love them. You know, I think, I think they're Australia's finest generation. They'd grown up in the Depression. They'd surmounted these incredible trials and horrors. And, and the few that you, you meet, the few that are left now, uh, are truly magnificent, modest men. They don't boast about it. They didn't go to war to seek conquest or glory. They just wanted to get the bloody job done and get home again. And those that survive uh, are just truly... I mean, every, everyone uses the term heroes. You know, some, some clown scores a try in football. He's called a hero. These guys genuinely were heroes. Mike, before we wrap it up today, I, we'd both like to acknowledge signalman Charles Ray and his wife Sylvia uh, from HMAS Perth, who's in the audience now. Charlie it's Ray. wonderful to have you here, sir. I think, I think Charlie, you, you were a wireman, weren't you? It was about 15 left, yeah. Cup, few, few in Queensland, a few in Sydney, Melbourne, and, and a few in Perth. There's not many. Well, we're delighted and moved to have you here today, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank my guest today, Mike Carlton.